Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. My name is Reverend Ramona Guadalupe. This ministry comes to you from the Hesaba House Church Ministry and the Promises of God. It is a bilingual ministry. I pray that you will be blessed. Today is March the 12th, year 2023. The time is going really quickly. We're still into the Lent season, and I pray that you will be a blessing to others as you receive the word today. Bienvenidos a todos. Yo oro que el Señor te vaya bendiciendo este nueve día. Este culto es en español, también en inglés. Yo oro que el Señor te vaya bendiciendo con la palabra que tiene para ti este día. Y también yo oro que el mensaje que tú recibes que sea una bendición para el mundo. Que sea bendecido, vamos a coger y para la escritura, el libro de Apocalipsis, capítulo 3, capítulo 3, versículos 19 hasta 22. Let's go right now to the book of Revelation, chapter, 20, um, chapter 3, verse 19 to 22. And the word reads, those who I love are review and discipline. So be earnest and repent. Here I am. I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my word and open the door, I will come in and eat with that person and they with me. To those who are, to those who are victorious, I will give the right to sit with me on my throne, just like I was victorious and sit down with my father on his throne. Whosoever has ears, let them hear what the Spirit says to the churches, the word from the Lord for the people of God. So beloved, it's a brand new day. If you are listening, if you are watching me from wherever you are, from the hospital bed, or if you in hospital, or if you are in your car, or if you are at home, or you are at church, let's take this moment and let's give it to the Lord because he has made this possible that you are viewing this ministry. And I also pray that let's go into prayer right now. Blessed Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, thank you for this day. Thank you for making it possible that your servant could stand before your people and that you get all the glory in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus, you gave your life for your church. I pray that you anoint your people who are listening, that if they hear your words today, they will hearten their hearts, that you will bless them and open up their hearts through the Holy Spirit that gives understanding. Blessed Father, let everything that comes out of my mouth and my heart be pleasing to you. Blessed Father, that you will glorify yourself, not here only in Vermont, but throughout the world, Blessed Father, that your name will be glorified throughout all nations in the name of our Lord Jesus, the Christ of Nazareth. Amen. So, beloved, it is a brand new day. We are here. I know there's still a lot of things, especially those in California, that are suffering this horrendous storm. And then in the Northeast, we'll be getting another snowstorm too. So let's keep people in, in our prayers, especially with the flood, the snow, and all that is happening, especially with the finance, the banks, a big bank that just finished closing and people have lost money. Let's pray that that doesn't become a ripple effect because it does affect each and every one of us. Yes, it happened to this particular bank as many of you have heard. Let's pray that those ways that have fault, that people have lost money in their bank, millions of dollars and companies that minister and provide services for all of us Let's keep them in prayer that the banks, that affect that happen in the banks, beloved, that doesn't affect all the banks, blessed Father, because it will affect each one of us. So let's keep that in mind. As you probably have heard, 
that nations are coming together <clears throat> and um, try to find peace. And we continue to pray for Ukraine and Russia and North Korea, China and Taiwan and the United States, that there will be some kind of peace and cease fire from Russia against Ukrainian. So we pray for those who are by the borders and that they will go through the process that is required of this country, especially those who are looking to come and live in the United States. And I also, we uplift our president of the United States, that he continue to do what is right for his people. Pray that anything that tries to hinder the progress of moving forward for his administration and for the benefit for the people as a whole. And it's not about selfishness. It's not about me, me, me. It's about the people of this country, not only us, but the people that will be affected according to his administration. So let's go today to the Hebrew text, chapter 17, verse 1 to 7. And the word reads, the whole Israelites community set out from the desert of sin, traveling from place to place as the Lord commanded. They camp and roughen, but there was no water for the people to drink. So they quarreled with Moses and said, give us water to drink. Moses replied, why do you quarrel with me? Why do you put the Lord to the test? But the people were thirsty for water there and they grumble against Moses they said why did you bring us up out of Egypt to make us and our children and livestock die of thirst then Moses cried out to the Lord what am I to do with these people they are almost ready to stone me the Lord answered Moses go out in front of the people, take with you some of the elders of Israel and take in your hand the staff with which you struck the Nile and go. I will stand there before you by the rock at Hammer. Strike the rock and water will come out of it for the people to drink. So Moses did this in the sight of the elders of Israel. And he called the place Massa and Meribah because the Israelites quarreled and became and became and because they tested the Lord, saying, Is the Lord among us or not? May the Lord add a blessing to this reading. Wow. Quite a lot. But we still give God the glory in spite of, of how we as human beings are. Let's go to the song 95 there. Let's go to the song 95 and you are here. Our Lord, our God. Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before him with thanksgiving and exhaust his name with music and song. For the Lord is great God, the great king above all gods. In his hands are the depth of the earth and the mountain's peak belongs to him. The sea is his, for he made it and his hand formed the dry land. Come, let us bow down in worship. Let us kneel before the Lord our maker for he is our God and we are the people of his pasture the flock under his care today if you hear today if you would hear his voice do not heart in your heart as in the on the days of Merbo as you did in the day of Master in the wilderness when your ancestor tested me 
They try me, though they have seen what I did. For 40 years, I was angry with that generation. I said, there are a people whose heart go astray. So they have not known my ways. So I declare on an oath on my anger, they should never enter my rest. May the Lord add a blessings to this reading. Moses, Moses, Moses. Beloved Moses, a friend of Jehovah. Moses, Moses, Moses. So beloved, what do we do when we see the world around us crumbling? Because many times, like I said to you, that Jesus knock on the door. If you let him in, he will come in. That's who he is when we receive Jesus. But here what is what's happening was the Israelites, Exodus chapter 17, verse 1 to 7. The people, they were in the wilderness in the desert. And they were moving from place to place according to God gave Moses the instruction. They saw everything that Jesus, that God did. They saw everything. The work that Moses did, it was not Moses, it was Jehovah. So the people were in the desert. And here was the people just... Just, they were thirsty, that I could imagine, I just can't imagine, they, must, they were tired. And they cry out to Moses saying, you know, we're thirsty, we're hungry, and all that stuff. And then, to make matters worse, they quarrel with poor Moses, a man that was so humble. When Jehovah God called him to lead the people out of Egypt, that they were being oppressed. But God has to make, he, he wanted to test them out. They went to the wilderness. God wanted to get rid of all that stuff that they have accumulated in their hearts when they were in Egypt. So God was doing some kind of cleansing in them. As we right now, we are in the Lent season. And what do we do on these 40 days and 40 nights? We read the scriptures, the word of God. We fast. And let me tell you, let me warn you. I don't request anyone to fast for 40 days. Many of you give up something. Some people give up chocolate. Some people give up being on social media. Some people give up whatever. And you devote yourself to prayers and reading the scriptures and giving God the praises. And we humble before the Lord. And we ask Jehovah God, what is it that you want us to do? What is it? Remove every stone from our hearts that is not according to your will. So they were in the desert and it was to get rid of all that stuff or they could focus on Jehovah. But instead, they picked a fight with Paul Moses. So Moses cried out to Jehovah. And Moses did what Jehovah told him to do. But instead, the test of Jehovah. And the song itself, God got rid of that generation. In his anger, does God get angry at the time? Absolutely. But does he stay angry with us? Absolutely not. As we go through this Lent time, we work on ourselves. God will help us to shape us into the way that God wants us to be. You know, it's funny. It's just like a mule or a horse that has not been written. And when the mule and the horse, they need to be trained. So we, they, we, we I have to say we, we sometimes are that mule and that horse to, that needs to be focused on and trained to be focused to God's ways. You know, we're living a dangerous time, very dangerous time. And, 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 and many of you and our youth committing suicide because they don't see no hope in the future. Family are killing themselves, murder, suicide because they don't see any future for themselves or even for their children. So beloved, here is a time that we could take and ask God, don't worry about your neighbors. Neighbors, let me tell you, don't worry about your neighbors, what they say. Because they're not going to get you into the place that God wants you to be. 
Don't worry about keeping up with the Joneses. Get rid of all that stuff because that's not what God wants you. He wants you. He wants to clean you to focus so that you become the mirror of Jesus Christ. You know, in, in the gospel of John chapter four, verse five to 42, here is a woman, a Samaritan woman, a Samaritan woman and the Jews did not get along. And matter of fact, I just want to remind you the history of the journey that Jesus took during his time that he was here on earth with us. He went to the, to the tribe, to the areas, into the land that Jehovah gave and promised to Jacob. All that territory that Jesus traveled through, it's a territory that was promised to the Israelites. But here was Jesus. He was tired from, from Galilee to from um, Jerusalem to Galilee. It was like 45 miles. He was tired, so he rested. And he was on a journey just like Moses. And there was this woman, a Phoenician woman that came to get water on an off time because she was someone the society looked down on her. So beloved, Jesus used that opportunity to show the Phoenician woman how that he is the rock that gives water that you will not thirst. It's in the gospel of Jesus Christ, the gospel of John chapter four. Moses, he was told what to do through Jehovah. Directed Moses to give water to a bunch of rebellious people. That must have driven Moses crazy, poor Moses. So he cried out to Jehovah. And God is the rock. He is the canteen that doesn't have holes in it. And the people drank water, but they tested Jehovah. Jesus, let the Phoenician woman know a woman that society called her prostitute didn't respect. She had so many husbands that I, I'm pretty sure that the community was looking down on her. But Jesus used her as a minister to bring the good news, the water, that, 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 that rock that is, silent, that is solid, that it will not make you thirsty. But living water will come out of you to be a blessing for so many people. But that's what happened. When us sometimes when we fail to see the hand of God and we rebel against God. And we test God. You know, it's a terrible thing. I remember pastor, when I started my ministry, um, when I was part of in training, um, before I went to seminary, there was a pastor who would say, it's a terrible thing to fall in the hands of the living God. And that is true. I have seen circumstances that it's a terrible thing to fall in the hands of the living God. We should never test God. Here is Moses doing what Jehovah has given to him, which Jehovah is the living water. That is a parable to our Lord Jesus Christ. That he is the living water in our life. God used this woman. While Jesus was by himself. An opportunity. Because the disciples went out to buy some food. But I'm pretty sure that if the disciples in those days. If the, the Samaritans and the Jews did not get along. And. They avoid it. They will take the longer route to avoid going to Samaria during that time. But Jesus used this opportunity, that time, to give God the glory, beloved. And what she, Jesus did, he let her know that she came to the well to get water. But what Jesus did, 
He showed her that he's the living water that you will never thirst. Jesus ministered to her. She went into her town and she shared with the whole community about Jesus. She became the living water that gushed out of that rock that Moses strike with his staff. She became the living water. She went to her town and she shared what God has done. Jesus, our Lord, the living water that you will never thirst. Society, we have to be careful of who you judge. Because here was a Samaritan woman that was a prostitute that she had so many husbands. But she, Jesus ministered to her, but he didn't do it while the disciples were there because the disciples were, they would have judged her, Jesus and would have judged the woman. And like I said, the Jews will take the longer route to avoid going to Samaria, to avoid contact with them. But Jesus is the one that brings nations in conflict together. God doesn't have any preference. You do his will. Your heart is open to Jesus. He would do the same thing. Now, this woman, this Phoenician woman, what she did, she became a disciple of Jesus Christ. She ministered living water coming out of her that she ran to her town and let everybody know what Jesus have done. Yes. What Jesus have done. What Jesus have done. The whole town believed. They even asked Jesus to stay in Jesus' dirt for a while. The living water. The most is the one that Jehovah used to show the people that God is the living water. But they failed to see that God is the living water. That you will not thirst. But they tested Jehovah. We test God so many times. And we have to stop doing that because you will not have the living water that becomes a blessing to others. The living water that this Phoenician woman, that she was able to be a blessing, the living water coming from her, that she was able to minister and share the gospel about Jesus Christ. And this is what Jesus talks about. He's no, there is nobody else out there that it will save you, your family, and have eternal life, but only through Jesus. We could say, oh, we believe, we believe, we believe, we believe in Jehovah, we believe. But did you have come to Jesus and confess? Without Jesus, you cannot open to that, you cannot go to that pearly gates. Jesus is the living water. Yes, the world around us is falling apart. Yes, Jesus is coming. But he told us all these things will happen before he comes. It is the beginning of the birth pain, beloved. This should be surprise. And those who have not received Jesus, you have become enemies of God. They refused Jehovah. When they were in the desert, they grumbled against Moses. <clears throat> so beloved. If you have not received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, say these words, Jesus, come into my life. Be my Lord and Savior. Give me that living water that I will not thirst. This is the time and confess your sins to him because Jesus knows everything about you. He sure does. Things that you won't even share with your friends. Things that nobody knows about you. But Jesus and Jehovah and the Holy Spirit knows about that. Because in the book I just finished reading to you, that Jesus will come and sup with you when we receive Jesus as his Lord and Savior, beloved. He loves you. He cares about you. Beloved, this is why he's always sending his messengers to you. So that you will see the love that God has for you. So that the living water will dwell in you that you will never thirst. And the spirit of the living God will dwell in you. Let's go into prayer.
Bless the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I pray for the people who are listening, that you will help them to receive the living water through our Lord Jesus Christ, the rock, that we will not thirst. The world around us is falling apart, but Jesus told us, blessed Father, I pray those who confess and receive Jesus Christ, that you will continue to bless them and show them the way through your Holy Spirit and deeper understanding, that they will read your word and get to know you. So I pray for your people, even those who do not know you, even those who refuse to know you, I uplift them to you. I also, Father, uplift all the children, blessed Father, and our youth. I ask of you to help them during these difficult times. I pray, Father, for the President of the United States and all the leaders around the world, that they will do what is right according to your will for their people. Blessed Father, glorify yourself. Let it be the multitudes and multitudes and multitudes receive you, and that we will do your will, be working in the field, sharing the gospel of love and peace according to your way, blessed Father, not according to the world. The love that you have for us, not according to this world, but according to your will, that we will be obedient because you're the God of love, but the God of love that knows the different, not according to the things of the world that people desire, but the things that you desire, you created us. Give them understanding to know the difference. So I place your people into your hands until you bring us back together next week. Let it be your will. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, amen. So blessed are you. Go in peace in the name of Jesus Christ. Vaya en paz en el nombre de Jesucristo hasta la semana que viene y con amor de Dios y sigue dándole el mundo, enseñándole el mundo el amor de Dios, Jehová, para todos los humanos, porque Jesús viene pronto. Amén.